Hey, Magnus here, and we want to take the 5D Mark IV and shoot 6K time lapses, even though the camera was designed for only 1080p time lapses. Here we go. All right, so when the 5D Mark IV came out, it came out with a the ability to do time lapses in 1080p. And although that's great, you know, time lapses are great, when the 6D Mark II came out, it had the ability to do time lapses in 4K. And in fact, when the 5D Mark IV was out, we wanted to do time lapses in 4K. Come on, the camera had the ability to do 4K, why can't you do time lapses in 4K? Well, it didn't come with it, or did it? It actually came with an intervalometer built in, and the intervalometer would take still shots for as long as infinity, as long as you program that in. Now, what that allowed you to do, especially if you're a savvy person, is to take those shots that the intervalometer would took over a stretched period of time and convert that to video footage. Not just any type of video footage, but raw video footage. The most flexible, best type of video footage that you could possibly have. Now, pros and cons is that pro, you're gonna get very high quality, over 6K, footage in kind of like a three by two format, which is the size of the sensor. So you get a lot of information there. But one of the cons is the file sizes are huge for even a short period of time for a time lapse. However, the ability to color correct it and then of course work it into post like you've got raw footage is absolutely amazing. But then when you're working it in post, it's pretty slow. Now what I'm going to teach you or pretty much show you is how I do it and I try to granted it's still time consuming but how I do it efficiently so that when I'm editing I can work with it pretty quickly. So now let's jump onto the computer and see what we got. Okay now first to, to set the ability to do use an intervalometer you have to be in photo mode on your camera and then from the 5D Mark IV, you go into the uh, photo taking options right here. And then you hit 4. Under the 4 preset, you have the interval timer. What you want to do with the interval timer is enable it. Once you enable it, you can actually set the details. And then you could have, you can set how long between each frame you want to take. And then the number of shots. I set it to infinity for my little test. And then once you do that, you pretty much get ready, take your first picture, set up your shot. And then when you set up your shot and take your first picture, it'll then start the intervalometer and you're ready to go. Now let's go to the computer. All right, so here we are at the computer. I've put the raw files of the intervalometer pictures taken uh, one by one. They're all in numerical order in a folder I've imported into my hard drive. Now that order is important because that will make sure that when you load it into After Effects, that it'll load the whole thing in order as footage. So let's go into After Effects and I'm gonna start up After Effects to show you guys how to import those pictures as footage. So let's start with a new composition, just a raw time-lapse would help if I learned to spell. Okay, now in raw time-lapse, I set the width and the height of this particular um, project as the resolution of each of my pictures. That way I get to take advantage of the full resolution that I took the pictures in, so it's greater than 4K. It's pretty much almost 7K footage in a three by two format. So I'm gonna load that in. So what I'll get is a timeline that's got a huge resolution. Now, what I want to do is import the raw files that I took. So I'm going to just click on the very first file and click on capture raw sequence, import as footage. Okay. So because I have my project at 24 frames per second, it's going to load per 24 pictures is gonna be one second. So that won't be much footage time at all. So now what you're gonna get is 
these shots. Now, what you can see from these shots is that I have the ability to adjust temperature, tint, and all the settings as if this were a raw photo and make adjustments, just like what would happen if I'd open this up in Photoshop or in Lightroom. So actually, I, I did preset a lot of these settings beforehand. Um, I'm also going to jump into lens correction and remove any chromatic aberration, enable profile correctors. And I had, I used a Canon 24 to 70 for this. So this helped a lot with removing a lot of the imperfections of the footage, which is great. So now that I did that, it'll apply it to all of the pictures that I have in that sequence. And I'm going to bring it down here. I'm going to bring it down and I probably should have set the time period that all of this was going to last. So if I'm going to, this footage is really only just that long. So let me bring the sequence down to just that because that's all we're working with. And the view to just that as well. So what we've got here is a little bit over seven seconds of footage that moves around and as you can see the frames don't change frequently because it takes a while to load now this is very slow because these raw files are huge and working with this would be difficult now I'm gonna file save as this footage and I'm going to, to save it just as a an After Effects file time-lapse raw for video now I saved it here and I didn't do anything, I didn't render it out and I'm not going to, now I have the ability to take my footage, I'll just take this out I have the ability to do Adobe Dynamic Link so if I do Dynamic Link and I import the composition see if I import this into Time Lapse Raw and I open up the folder, there it is and I'll select the composition now it'll bring it right here without me having to render it but here's what you'll get. It will take forever and a day. Now this is a 4K sequence, but it'll take a long time just for a single frame to appear in my Premiere sequence because it's just a, incredibly long. So I don't wanna go ahead and do that. I'd rather render out the footage using Adobe Encoder. Time-lapse raw for video. I'm gonna import my file into Adobe Encoder and, and select my composition. So here I go, I've got it loaded and I'm going to encode it, but if you notice, it's set up for YouTube Video 4K. Now, YouTube Video 4K is gonna crop in my footage in pretty much the middle of the entire picture. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna actually render out the entire resolution of my picture. See, it crops in, it gives me black bars, it's only rendering 3840 by 2160. I don't want to lose all of that. So what I want to do is I'm going to render it in H.265 file format because this format gives me the ability to get higher resolution than just 4K. H.264 does not let me do that, but this does. So from this file format, it recognizes the file that it's 6720 by 4400, a huge resolution. And that's what I'm gonna go ahead and render out. And I'd get the folder ready and then I'd hit render. Once I render, and I pretty much did that already, I'd import the file into a sequence and in Adobe Premiere, here's the whole file. Now, if, as, as you can see, it loaded up much quicker. Now I would have already put the video settings that I desired previously when I did the editing, but look what I can do. I could zoom out on this footage. Look at all of that. And 100% size for 4K is zoomed in this much. So 100%, I can move around in my shot and still be 4K and not lose any detail. That is amazing. And you could dynamically move the footage, of course, once you once you get familiar with uh, Premiere, to actually make it look pretty cool. Now, here's what I've got. I did kind of a zoom in on the footage as time moved. Now, I had the autofocus on when I did the time lapse, so it's a bit jittery. 
as it zoomed in and out. But I was able to zoom in on the footage and make it that much more dynamic and living without, heck, I cropped in to get perfect 4K in this footage, which is a pretty incredible ability when it comes to time lapse. So you can really make your time lapses dynamic, even if you're just using your camera. So that's what I wanted to show you. And let me show you what the finished time lapse looks like in 4K. Again, jittery because I had autofocus on, so it kept on shifting the lens when I would do it. So there you go, 4K time lapse without losing any resolution. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below or if you've tried something like this in the past. Like, share, hit that notification bell as long as you make my day. If you subscribe today, this is Magnus and I'm out. See you guys later.